Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to invite a very old friend, Janos Pasta, to come up. He is the Assistant Secretary General for Climate Change, and he will be speaking on behalf of the UN Secretary General. And Janos, I hope also on your own behalf. Thank you, Martin, and uh, you were right about the previous uh, presentation. Uh, this is a hard act to follow, but I'll do my best. Um, so, as, as mentioned, I'm here uh, to deliver a brief uh, message from the Secretary General, which I will read up, and then after that I will share a few personal thoughts also with you. So here I quote the Secretary General's message. Your Excellencies, distinguished participants, I'm delighted to extend warm greetings to this summit of conscience. I thank President Francois Hollande and the Government of France for taking the initiative to organize this gathering and all the participants for their commitment to honoring and caring for our common home, the planet Earth. Climate change is the defining challenge of our time. It affects us all, but it does not affect all of us all equally. We have a profound responsibility to protect and assist the world's poorest and most vulnerable people and to pass on to future generations a planet that is thriving and healthy. I welcome the contributions that the world's faith communities and all people of conscience and goodwill bring to this issue. As His Holiness Pope Francis recently reminded us in his encyclical, climate change is a moral issue of the highest order. I welcome the efforts by millions of citizens around the world to reduce their carbon, carbon footprint minimize excess consumption, protect species, and plant trees. Many are also advocating for a meaningful universal agreement in Paris this December that commits all countries to action by all for the benefit of all. Given the alarming pace of environmental destruction, these measures are essential. However, it is clear that we must go beyond these steps to embrace a fundamental change in consciousness and learn to live in better balance with other species and the planet that sustains us. We have much to learn and not much time. An ambitious agreement here in Paris at year's end is essential. It would help to accelerate the dramatic changes that are already taking place, above all the revolution in renewable energy that is seeing prices drop and its viability rise. A universal agreement would also commit all countries to climate action, thereby promoting equity, global solidarity, and a much needed sense of common cause. I will count on you to raise your voices and press your leaders to seize this opportunity. At the same time, we know that climate change is too important to leave to governments alone. Each of us can and must be part of the solution. I encourage you to continue to work together as communities of faith and conscience, united by a shared concern for building a more just, sustainable, and livable world for all. Thank you for your commitment and your leadership, and please accept my best wishes uh, for the outcomes of this summit. And here ends the Secretary General's statement. Now, and since this uh, event is all about why do I care, I thought uh, it would be nice to share with you a few of my own personal thoughts. And as a start, I should say how much it's an honor for me uh, to be in this incredible hall for the second time this year, and I'm able to speak here. It's really an honor. Thank you very much for that. And as uh, Madame the Ministre Segolin Royal mentioned about science, it is so important. Climate change is about science, but it's a lot more than about science and about the scientists. And as we know, and I'm sure, uh, Minister Fabius, you're going to talk about uh, uh, preparations for, uh, for the COP also. Uh, it's about the politics and the politicians, but it's a lot more than about the politicians. It's, it's a lot more than that. And in fact, climate change is the largest uncontrolled experiment humankind has ever done to our common home, Oikos. And this humankind is us. It's all of us. It's you and me and everybody else. It's all of us, but it's not equally so. With climate change, we have introduced an additional force for inequality and injustice. 
because it is those that are most vulnerable and those who are least responsible for climate change that are bearing the brunt of the impacts. We can blame the coal and oil companies for, produce, for uh, giving us dirty energy, and of course we must. We can blame the car manufacturers for producing polluting cars, and yes, we must press for new technologies. But we can't put all the blame on everybody else. We need to act, each of us, to respond to what science tells us, which means we must move rapidly to a low and eventually zero carbon future. But we must also act in a way to address the inequality and injustice exacerbated by climate change. So we must act in solidarity with others. Why do I care? Because my parents taught me early on to do so, and I'm really grateful for that. And now, decades later, I have children, and in a few months, I will soon become a grandfather. And this gives me additional force that we must leave a world behind in which they can live, and they can live well. And it's not sufficient to tell them that technological progress will solve the issues alone. I was trained as a scientist and as an engineer, and I wanted to fix our common home with nuclear energy and other technological solutions. But I soon realized that something more was needed. So I spent the last 35 years working on energy, environment, climate change issues. My first job was with the World Council of Churches. I was director of something called the Energy for My Neighbor program. Now, 35 years later, I think we need a climate change solutions for my neighbor program. And I am trying to contribute to that in a different way than before. But now, less than five months before the COP21 in Paris, I must say I keep, up, keep waking up at three in the morning. Not just because of the constant jet lag, but because of the enormity of this task still ahead of us. But eventually I do fall back asleep. And it's because there is so much happening in the world that is beginning to take us in the right direction and therefore to success in December. The world around us is increasingly recognizing that climate change actually may be the opportunity to move toward a better world. Again, as Madame Royale said that earlier on. And uh, the gathering here during the Sommet des Consciences and the energy that will come out of this magnificent plenary hall will help all of us individually, but also NGOs, companies, politicians, and all other actors to make the right choices in getting on to a low carbon, just and equitable future. But we must ensure that we, must be, that we make best use of this energy to bring more and more people on board. And I know we each of us will. We will because you all care, we all care. So let's move on and do what we need to do. Thank you very much.